I'm North Hempstead Town Supervisor Jennifer DeSena, here with Councilman Ed Scott and our town's environmental specialist, Megan Festuca. Today, we're going to be talking about how to use rain barrels and composters, both of which are available inexpensively through our town. Megan, thank you for being with us today. Tell us about composting. Thank you for having me. So composting is just the breakdown of organic materials. And then when decomposers break these materials down, it turns into a nutrient-rich soil amendment that we can use for our gardens and yards. Why is composting important? Composting has many benefits, including nutrients for our plants and soil organisms, improving soil texture, reducing waste, and a really important one is the fact that it helps us reduce uh, synthetic fertilizer use because you're using a natural soil amendment. And why is it important that we reduce that synthetic fertilizer use? Um, synthetic fertilizers have nitrogen in them and our groundwater and our surface waters are both plagued by nitrogen pollution. So it's really important that we reduce that in our environment. Can you tell the audience what they can put inside of the composter? Yeah, so compost needs a balance of brown materials that are carbon rich and green materials that are nitrogen rich. Browns would be things like dried leaves, dried grass clippings and yard trimmings, eggshells. The greens are things like your fruit and vegetable scraps from your kitchen um, and any fresh garden trimmings and, and things like that. A good rule of thumb is to add three parts browns to one part greens and that helps to keep the compost in balance. And what shouldn't we put in here? So you shouldn't put things like uh, dairy products, meat, fish. Um, these won't break down in the compost because uh, these compost bins are a little small to break down and they won't get as high of temperature to break those things down. Um, the other thing you shouldn't put in is pet waste and also weeds, again, because it's not gonna get high enough in temperature to break down those weeds. You can spread weed seeds in your garden that way. Is there anything we can do to make the compost form quicker? Yeah, so the two main things are making the materials that you put in the compost as small as possible. So that increases their surface area and they can be broken down more quickly. The other one is making sure you are adding oxygen. So by mixing and turning your compost you uh, as frequently as you can, that'll help things break down quickly. And is there a, a preferable spot for the composter? Yeah, so um, the sun helps the compost to heat up, which helps things break down. Um, so putting it in a sunny spot or a part shade spot is the best. Putting it in the shade, uh, you're going to have a slower breakdown of your materials. Tell us about this rain barrel. So rain barrels are basically containers like this. Um, they collect rainwater from a building, uh, the rooftop of a building. And then you can use this water for outdoor irrigation. And where would you put it near a gutter? Would you just, can it be standalone? You can, you can use it freestanding. Um, you won't get as much water that way. So most people will put it under their gutter downspout like this. Most likely it will need to be cut. And then you'll wanna make sure that the water is flowing into the screen on top. We can show the screen right here. With the downspout going. So you'll see the screen here. It has very small holes. It'll prevent debris from getting in and prevent mosquitoes from getting in, but allow the water to flow into there. So the gravity of the water, when you want to use, you attach your hose or your whatever you want to yeah, put, so soak you hoses. Your, you have your spigot down here. Um, right now it's pretty close to the ground, so a lot of times it's important to put these up on either cinder blocks or bricks or something like that to increase that pressure. You could attach a soaker hose, like you said, or you could just put a watering can underneath to use the water. And I see you have knockouts here. so. If if there is an overflow, would you knock these things out? Yeah, so these are either, you could use it as an overflow valve or uh, you can attach to a hose to it. So if you do that, it helps to prevent the water if it does get to the top from overflowing back into the foundation of your house. How long have you been using a rain barrel? Um, I actually have a freestanding one because I don't use much irrigation in my house because I have lots of native plants, but okay. um, <laughs> I've had it uh, maybe for six years or so. Good. Yeah, so and it's held up pretty well even though it's a plastic bin. So one thing you should do with the rain barrel though is because it's plastic, put it away for the winter because it could, the water could freeze in it and crack the barrel. So you could either just take it and put it upside down or you could put it and store it in your garage. Good to know. Megan, why is it important to use a rain barrel? Rain barrels are great. They help us to conserve potable water use, help us to save money on water, and also help us to reduce stormwater pollution and runoff. You could use it for any kind of plants outside. Just don't drink it. At North Hempstead, we're always looking for ways to make our town more environmentally friendly. And that means partnering with you, our residents. 
these bins and barrels strike a balance between affordability and sustainability, so stay tuned for how you can order yours today.